Hello everyone, welcome to our uh, second midweek chat. We started last week and uh, we're just going to continue for now and see where it takes us. Um, I'm Noel Kamek and I'm a pastor at Life Church. And so we just wanted to use this opportunity to kind of discuss some things in relation to your faith. We're kind of continuing a conversation about your faith. Not about my faith, but about your faith. And um, kind of the question is, is your faith growing? This great treasure that God's Word talks about that's so valuable, so important to us, and um, uh, something that we should be growing in. Are we growing in it? And I know that I want to. I want to have increasing faith and grow in faith and um, my desire is that we would all have that. And so we're kind of hitting some topics, discussing some things, having a conversation about our faith and what does it look like in the real world. And um, so that's the question. My, my uh, other question as I drink a cup of tea is, what is your favorite tea? I'm drinking some black tea. But how about reality? Do you like that tea? Um, faith has to do with reality. And what is reality? Faith is about, really, it's about an unseen reality. And in Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about Moses as a man of faith. And it says about him that uh, Moses saw him who is invisible. And because he saw him who is invisible, he acted in a certain way. I believe it's in verse 27. Then in um, verse 1 of Hebrews 11, which they call the faith chapter, it says um, in the King James Version, I think it is, it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. So faith is seeing the unseen. Or faith is um, faith is understanding that there is a deeper reality beyond what we just see with our physical eyes, or what we would consider our reality is temporary. And so, have you uh, learned by faith to take hold of a deeper reality? Because that's what you do when you when you're. Um, getting hold of something by faith, you are taking hold of a, a deeper reality. And as I already said, that um, if you know how to fear, then you know how to have faith. Because fear is, like I, I turned it around, fear is the substance or the assurance of things that you dread and the evidence of things unseen. I know they, they some people take a, a, a is it an, uh, I forget what you call it when you do it by the letters, but they say fear is false evidence appearing real. And so, um, but faith is taking hold of a reality that is deeper. And this is such a cool thing and such a very interesting thing. And you recognize, usually you recognize your great need for it when you realize how shaky what we can see is, okay? So I wanted to uh, tell tell you about a story that I heard or I read uh, by, uh, there was an American who was in Hong Kong, a small, or the big city, I suppose, of Kowloon. And he was walking down these little streets um, in Hong Kong and he came upon a tattoo parlor. And he said when he looked in the window, he saw a variety of tattoos, you know, mermaids, uh, big hearts, uh, different stuff like this. But then he said he saw one that really caught his eye, and the tattoo said, born to lose. So he said he went into the shop and said to the um, shopkeeper, does anyone actually ever have that terrible phrase tattooed on their body? And he said that the shopkeeper in his... Um, limited English said, yeah, sometimes. And then he says, how could anybody in their right mind get 
that tattoo um, on, on them. And he said that Chinese man that uh, owned the shop said in his broken English, he said, before tattoo on body, tattoo on mind. And <clears throat> I think that's an interesting idea that isn't it interesting how what we think can have a, a profound effect and, and um, come into the, the seen reality of our lives. And once our minds are tattooed with negative things, that really ends up, can often end up sabotaging what our life is meant to be. And so what is your tattooed on your mind? If you think about that, I have to think about that for myself. What are, what are the things that are tattooed on my mind that keep going and, and lock me up and affect how I live, okay? Um, because what we truly believe truly has an effect on how we live, all right? So today, the topic, though, is exercising joy, a wonderful word. Not the exercise part, but the joy part. Actually, they're both wonderful words. I know some of us have an aversion towards one of those words, especially. But exercising joy. And uh, I wanted to look at um, a few few things in my limited time. I hope I'm not going to go super long, but we'll see how I do. Uh, I wanted to look at a man in the midst of uh, societal collapse. There's a, a story I want to tell about that man. And um, I want to look at an angel's message. I want to look at two guys in prison. And then I want to propose uh, to you that you exercise your joy. Because we're talking about faith. And so exercise joy. So a man who's in the midst of societal collapse, an angel's message, and two guys in prison. All right, so the first is a man in societal collapse, and I got my Bible. This is the story of um, Habakkuk, and you can find it in the Old Testament. He's one of the prophets, and his um, book only actually has three chapters in it, but it's a very interesting book because, um, like us, we're kind of, we have a bit of a societal collapse, a global societal collapse somewhat, We'll see what the repercussions of that look like. But uh, Habakkuk was experiencing something similar only at a much greater level in his experience and in, in his nation's experience. And there was the, the nation of Babylon was going to come. They were on their way to destroy uh, Judah. And he has some interesting responses um, in the midst, and um, he was actually, the nation was at a starvation level societal collapse. And I'm going to look at a couple of the verses. But what I find interesting in uh, verse 18, Habakkuk says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And then he says it a second time in a different way. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. Okay. Uh, so this is what he does, and he rejoices, but rejoicing doesn't mean that you won't be experiencing sorrow and grief. Sometimes we think it's an either-or. You either are glad and rejoicing, or you are sorrowful and grieving. But what I'm going to try and um, show us is that actually that in the midst of sorrow and grief, we can actually rejoice, which is an interesting thing to be able to do. And that's why I call it exercising joy. Okay, so this is um, some of the words of Habakkuk. He says in uh, verse 16, he says, at the, at the coming of this, uh, really a judgment, um, at the coming of this army towards his nation, he says, I hear and my body trembles. My lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters into my bones. My legs tremble beneath me. So you see, this guy was not just happy clappy. He was actually experiencing real uh, fear, anxiety, uh, sorrow, grief. Um, he was feeling these things. These were feelings and emotions that he experienced. 
And, you know, even this word, my body trembles, actually, that means his, his bowels, his inner organs are trembling at what is uh, coming towards him and what he's in the midst of. And, and then it goes on in the next verse, he says, in verse 17 of Habakkuk 3, he says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. So he's talking about where he has come to a place beyond just them being out of toilet roll in the shopping center. Beyond that, they're out of everything. They have nothing left, starvation level. And he says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. So our joy actually can be right in the midst of sorrow and hardship and pain. And so Habakkuk also, he, he does a number of things. I know I don't have tons of time to go into this whole book, but he talks about um, how he remembered. He, when, it, when this stuff was happening, he remembered how God had been with his people in the past, in the Exodus, and he had delivered them out of Egypt in their slavery and their bondage, and not through any earning or strength of their own. God delivered them because he was a God who would save and so he is the God of their salvation. And this is like a normal thing for the people of God. Uh, I know in Psalm 42, uh, verse 11, it says, he says, they, you speak to yourself, actually. He says, why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. So we talk to ourselves. We say, hey. I know you're feeling this, but hope in God. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Listen, soul, bless the Lord. Don't forget all his benefits. Psalm 103. So it's a common thing, remembering. Uh, another thing Habakkuk did is he repeated it to himself. I already said that. In verse 18, he says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And he says it again. I will take joy in the God of my salvation over and over and over again because um for some reason we really forget things very easily as people don't we it's like we it's so easy for us to drift towards sadness and fear and anxiety and so sometimes we got to work these things into ourselves this is the same reason why like professional basketball players you know basketball is my favorite sport and professional basketball players these guys that are pros making millions go and shoot free throws hundreds of times a day. They shoot three-pointers hundreds of times a day. They do layups hundreds of times a day because we drift otherwise, and you got to keep your game sharp. And so that's what uh, Habakkuk does. He remembers, and then he repeats. And uh, so this is what we got to do. We got to drill God's Word, God's reality, God's truth into our lives because sometimes our experiences are difficult, and we need to look sometimes beyond those things. And, and the, the message of Christianity, right, at the very heart of it is joy. And um, I was reading Luke chapter 2, verse 10, and it, the angels, angel comes to the shepherds, and he says, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. And uh, I, just, I just think that's um, such an interesting thing. At the heart of our message is the heart of who we are, actually, should be joy. We have joy. It's been given to us by God. And the good news is, is that he goes on to say in the next verse, he says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Right, And so the gospel is good news of great joy. It's not good news. It's not, it is good news. It's not good advice. It's not, the gospel is not good advice about what you need to do to earn God's love or earn his salvation. It's good news about what God has done. Right? So it's, it's 
of how I remember it. It's not good advice, it's good news. That's the gospel. It's about what God has done. He sent his son to die on the cross for our sins so that we could have a relationship with God. We've been brought back to God, away from rebellion and our brokenness, and into a new relationship with God, an opportunity, an open door to God. And so this is the joy of the gospel. My favorite parable that Jesus tells is the story of the, the young man who said to his father, give me all my money, all my inheritance. You're like dead to me. I want to go take my money and do what I want to do. I want to live my life my way. And so his father reluctantly gives him the money and his son leaves and it says that he spends all his money on wild living parties and all kinds of craziness. And finally, he ends up literally living with pigs. And he says to himself, oh, maybe if I go back to my father's house, maybe at least he'll take me in and I can like be a slave or work for him or something. Maybe he'll give me a job. I know he won't love me and take me back as his son, but hopefully I can get something and just bet whatever would be better than what, where I'm at right now. And so he goes back and then it says, Jesus says that the father sees him a far way off and he runs to him and he grabs him and he says, son, and he brings him back. He puts clothes on him, gives him a ring. He says, my son is back. Let's have a party. And he throws this huge party because the son who was lost is now returned. And I love it because it's um, because it's this picture that God is a God who throws parties for the undeserving. Right. And so we have this great joy. This is the kind of God that we know. This, this is who, God, who Christ has shown us, that we have a God who loves us. He's for us, not against us. And so we have this deep joy that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's not about us earning anything or doing anything. It's just about us returning to our Heavenly Father. And so this is joy at the heart of the Christian message. And Paul talks about joy as joy is a, a fruit of the Holy Spirit as well. So it's this, it's this gift that we are given from God, joy, and, and, it's, and then it develops by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can grow it into our lives. Don't you want to grow more joy in your life? I, I do. And Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy. And, and so joy is a gift that we can receive from God. It's something that God can give to us. And the Spirit can empower us to, to grow in it. But also, not only is it something that is given from God, but it's also something that needs to be developed. And this is... Uh, Another thing Paul says about joy, he says in Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. And so, not only is it a gift, but it's something that we have to develop. And so this is why I say, exercise your joy. I want to exercise my joy. And... Um, I can't get into it too much, but in Acts 16, 16 to 40, you see that, that Paul was a man who rejoiced. And, and when he's writing this to the Philippians, but actually his, his experience in Philippi, he was actually um, beaten. Him and Silas were beaten and put in prison, into chains. And it says that in the, in the night, they, they, they were praying and singing praises to God in the midst of their imprisonment. They had been beaten without any, uh, they didn't appear before a court. Unjustly, they were beaten and then they were sent to prison. And listen, prison was not nice. Prison is not nice now. Um, despite what people may say, it's still not nice. But prison then was even worse. And at least compared to our, our prisons, probably here in Ireland, I believe it was much worse in Philippi. And so he's in the, he, his circumstances are rough, and yet you see him and Silas both praising. So when he says, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I will say rejoice, um, he, he actually, he's somebody we should probably listen to. And um, 
regardless of the circumstances, we're called to exercise joy. Exercise the joy that you have been given. So there's a lot of, um, right, um, there's a lot of people with great potential. And you can have great gifting, like joy. You can have a great talent to be uh, an athlete. Or you can have a great talent to be an engineer. You can have a great talent to be an artist. But if you don't exercise that gift, you'll never reach the potential that you were meant to reach. And it's the same with joy. We've been given joy, but if we don't exercise it, we're not going to be entering into the full potential that God desires us to have it at. Isn't that good? That's a good one, Noel. So let's exercise our joy. I love this story I read uh, about uh, a president, our six, the 16th president in America, President Lincoln. I'm going to read it to you. He said, an advisor to President Lincoln suggested a certain candidate uh, for, for the Lincoln uh, cabinet, so the people that would work with him. But Lincoln refused this candidate, saying, I don't like the look of his face. But sir, the advisor said, a man can't help the look of his face. And Lincoln replied, every man over 40 has a responsibility for the look of his face. I love that. Every man over 40 is responsible for his face, rep replied Lincoln, and the subject was dropped. So no matter what you think about your attitude, it shows on your face. So how is your joy? How's your joy doing? How's my joy doing? Um, another quote that I love, I don't actually know who said it, but they, somebody said, it wasn't Noel, the test of any great philosophy is where does it leave you when you appear to have lost everything? The test of any great philosophy is where does it leave you when you appear to have lost everything? Thank God we have God. Uh, I just want to read one last little um, quote that I found in a book by John Maxwell. The book's called Developing the Leader Within You. He writes, I am impressed with the philosophy of the following statement. God chooses what we go through, and we choose how we go through it. And John Maxwell goes on to say, it describes Viktor Frankl's attitude as he was terribly mistreated in a Nazi concentration camp. His words to his persecutors have been an inspiration to millions of people. He said, the one thing you cannot take away from me is the way I choose to respond to what you do to me. The last of one's freedoms is to choose one's attitude in any given circumstance. Choose. And so, as we began with the story of the tattoo that said born to lose, <clears throat> I, I would say we have not been born to lose, but we have been born to choose. And my encouragement to you is to choose joy. Uh, choose joy in this season. Uh, let's be great, grateful to God in this season. Let's, let's exercise our faith in gratitude, in, in praise to God. Um, and, you know, let's ask, Holy Spirit, would you... Give me the power to develop what you have given me, this joy. Allow me to develop that in my life by faith. Regardless of my circumstances, I want that inner strength to exercise joy. I want to develop that. And then let's be faithful and let's begin to just exercise this. I hope, I hope this will be an encouragement to you um, to choose joy in whatever circumstances your life is bringing you in this season or maybe in, in, in the coming days. And so I pray God bless you.